Please be seated for our Bible readings. The first reading is taken from Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth, chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. In this reading, the Apostle Paul writes to the church in Corinth about how to excel in being generous. We want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that has been granted to the churches of Macedonia. For during a severe ordeal of affliction, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For as I can testify, they voluntarily gave according to their means and even beyond their means, begging us earnestly for the privilege of sharing in this ministry to the saints. And this, not merely as we expected, they gave themselves first to the Lord and by the will of God to us, so that we might urge Titus that, as he had already made a beginning, so he should also complete this generous undertaking among you. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark chapter 4, beginning at verse 3. Glory to you, O Lord. In this reading, Jesus tells the parable of the sower, seed and soils, and then explains what it means. Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, and it sprang up quickly, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew and choked it, and yield, yielded no grain. Other seed fell into good soil, and brought forth, growing up and increasing and yielding, thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said, let anyone with ears to hear, listen. Then Jesus said to them, do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy. 
but they have no root and endure only for a while. Then, when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are those sown among the thorns. These are the ones who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, and it yields nothing. And these are the ones sown on good soil. They hear the word and accept it and bear fruit thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated and shall we pray together. Lord, may my mouth speak wisdom and the meditation of my heart bring understanding that your Holy Spirit would be our teacher this morning to awaken our hearts, expand our minds and shape our identity in you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Anyone here good at blowing up balloons? There you go, that's a shock for you. Anyone good at blowing up balloons? Anyone? Hopeless? Anyone like me? I've got something to admit this morning. I can't blow up a balloon. Am I the only one? Anyone? Can anyone blow up a balloon? Rachel? There you go, come and get one. Who else can blow up a balloon? There are five. Pat wants one. There you go. Blow, you can blow up that. Give one. Anyone else want a balloon? Right. You need one of these then, don't you? Like me. I come prepared. Brian, there you go. There's a balloon. Who else wants one? There you go, Keith. And one more. Graham, you're clever. You will work it out. Now, keep blowing, keep going, and I'll, I'll tell you when to stop, basically. I've got one as well. Keep blowing. And you might be wondering, why on earth am I giving you these balloons? Yeah, Rachel, that's about fine. That's great. Don't do anything with it. Just keep it like that. Pat, yeah, yours is fine as well. Keep going. A bit more. There we go. Oh, Brian, he didn't need it. He can do it. There we go. That's fine. Keith, hold yours there. We're getting there. Keep going. And you need, you need to hold it. Don't tie it. Don't tie it. You need, to, you need to hold it. Keep going, Graham. It's all right. I'll come to you last. You see, you might be thinking, why on earth... Am I giving you these balloons? And you see, I'm giving you these balloons because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these balloons to explain the message of Jesus' story this morning. You see, when Jesus walked on this earth, he used lots of different ways, didn't he, to, to teach people. But one of the main ways in which he taught people was through stories or through parables. And parables are just stories from everyday life that he used to connect people with a God who longed to have a relationship with his people. And of course, this scene is a most famous scene. Everyone would have seen that scene. You know, we can still imagine that scene and we can still think about this scene maybe as we go about St. Juan of a sower or a farmer sowing some seed. And of course, in this story, what we, what we read and what we hear is that often when Jesus used stories, he never explained them. But this one he did. So it makes it a bit easier for us. And Jesus says that there is a, a sower, a farmer, who sows some seed. Jesus doesn't say who the sower is. And then he says there's some seed. Now we can take from the seed, he calls it the word. 
Now, we could say that's the Bible. We could say that was Jesus' message that he wanted to bring. And then he said there are four different types of soil, didn't he? He said, there's a seed that falls on the path or the hard ground. He said, there's the seed that falls on the rocks or the shallow ground. Or there's the seed that falls amongst the thorn like the cluttered or the conflicted ground. And then there's the seed that falls on the good soil. And what Jesus says is that Each of those four types of soil represent listeners. And the response that a listener can make upon hearing Jesus' words. So will we be respond like the seed that fell on the path that represents the hard ground or a hard heart? Or will we be like the, the seed which falls on the rocks If you like the the shallow ground where there would have been a bit of soil but then it would have all been rocks underneath that represents a shallow heart. Or will we be like the, the seed that falls among the thorns? In other words, it will start to grow but like you've you've known your garden, the weeds grow faster than the plants. Or as I look at the, the rectory hedge at the moment and the thorns are growing faster than the hedge. And it represents a cluttered or conflicted heart, or Jesus says, will you be like the seed which falls on the good soil? And there the image is presented of a heart of overflowing and overwhelming generosity. You see, here's where, here's where these balloons come in. See, if we, if we think about each of these balloons. Now, Brian, come and join me. Keith, come and join me for a moment. Rachel, come and join me. Yeah, you need to put a bit more air in. Graham, how's your balloon doing? Should I borrow it? Let me use that one for... You know, you can't get the, you can't get the decent pumps these days. Brian, where's that nice... Who's got the blue pump? I worked out that the blue pump was the best. Mine wasn't very good. Yours wasn't very good either. So let's have a look. There we go. I told you the blue one was the best. Don't tie a knot in it. Only I'm going to tie a knot in this one. We'll leave that one there. You see, let's use these balloons. You see, for some of us, basically, I'm going to use this balloon. So I'm going to show you how rubbish I'm at blowing up balloons. That's rubbish, isn't it? I told you I was rubbish at it. it. Of course, it might have helped if I hadn't cut the end off the balloon. You see, for some of us, we hear Jesus' message. You know, and it's just like the seed that fell on the path. You know, nothing happens. And you and I, we, we know people like that, don't we? You mention Jesus and they just don't want to know. It's as if a wall comes up, a barrier, and it's like the seed is just kind of taken up before it's had any chance to plant. Or, Rachel, let's have a look at your balloon a moment. No, 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 keep it there, that's fine. You see, now what I want you to do is just let it go. Just let it go. No, 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 it's all right. You see, this balloon represents the seed, if you like, that fell among the rocks. You see, it starts to grow, and it looks impressive. But then what happens, Jesus says in the story, is maybe people start to follow him. But then maybe they realize that his word is a bit harder than what they thought. And all of a sudden, they just drift away as quickly as kind of like they seem to join. And you and I, Jesus says, will know people like that. 
And then let's have a look. Have you, let's have a look at your balloon, Pat. Yeah. Now, Keith, will you tie a knot in your balloon? And Brian, will you tie a knot in your balloon, please? You see, this balloon represents the seed that fell on the thorns. You see, it too looks, starts to grow and looks really, really impressive. But then what happens, Jesus says, is the distractions of life start to come in. Or it could be the, the worries of, of, of life. And all of a sudden, it's a bit like letting the air out of this balloon just ever so gently. And all that happens is kind of like things just take over. And other things become more important. And the growth that happened just slowly dies. And then there are three balloons left. And you may be wondering, there's only one type of soil left and there's three balloons left. Why are there three balloons left? Well, you see, when Jesus talked about the, the, the soil in the good seed, or the, the good seed in the, in the seed in the good soil, he talked about it in terms of the plural. You see, do you know what the, the harvest was? Do you know what the possible harvest might be in Jesus' day? from one seed falling in good soil. You might get a return of anywhere between five and a 15 best. But what Jesus is saying in his story is he says you have an opportunity through your heart, through it being a good heart, of growing a harvest of 30 or 60, or Keith's got the 100 one on. And so Jesus just offers us that choice this morning. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. And Keith, thank you. You can all sit down. Is it? It's not a happy one. Don't worry. I'll keep it. You see, if we think about Jesus' story, what he's offering there for is he's offering us a, each of us, if we'll allow his seed, if we'll respond and listen to his word in our heart, then we can respond with a harvest of 30 or 60 or 100 fold. It shows us, therefore, it's a picture of overwhelming and overflowing generosity. Because actually what Jesus is saying is this. He's saying even the least productive seed, if it falls in the good soil, will produce an abundant harvest. Never mind if you take Jesus' word even more seriously and follow him more closely in your heart, then you grow a harvest of 60 or even more, 100. Now, of course, we can take Jesus' story, we can apply it to our whole vision for life, we can apply it to our, if you like, our whole purpose for life. And also we can apply it in the three ways in which we can actually overflow with generosity in our lives, with our time, with our talents or our gifts and our treasure. And of course, as this is our Harvest Thanksgiving service and the start of our gift month, we're thinking of it particularly this morning in terms of the gifts, in terms of the financial gifts that we might give in response to Jesus' word. And Jesus just says to us this morning, I wonder when you got that letter a few weeks ago now or a couple of weeks ago now, that excellent letter that was written by Peter and David. I wonder, what was your response in your heart to receiving it? You know, hopefully none of us were like the seed which fell on the path. You know, that kind of could be typified in the action. You know, the church is after my money again. Because that represents the seed, if you like, that fell on the path. It just gets snatched away before it even has take time to hold. Or could we be like the seed that, that fell on the rocks? You know, that we think, yes, this is a really good thing. I've got to do it. But then what happens is it just doesn't happen, basically. Or will we be like the 
the seed which fell on the thorns. You know, we, we have every intention of doing it, but then we kind of maybe look, oh, October looks a difficult month. Maybe we've got more going than what we thought. Maybe there's something that we really want and it's kind of going to make a difference for us. So it won't happen. Or will we be like the seed which fell on the good soil? And then it's a question of kind of like, is it the yield of the 30 or the 60 or the 100 from taking hold of Jesus' message to us this morning? You see, it's not necessarily about the amount because the definition of generous according to that reading from 2 Corinthians is that they gave according to their means and then they gave something more. See, because as that reading tells us, Christian giving isn't inspired by charity. It's inspired by love and the cross. And so as we start our gift month and on our Harvest Thanksgiving service, Jesus just, through this message, says, will we be a people of overwhelming and overflowing generosity? Shall we pray together? Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, who gave us in Jesus Christ the example of what it means to be truly generous. Help each one of us to respond in love and joy to your grace and mirror the practices of the Macedonian churches by excelling and overflowing in our giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to continue in prayer now as Keith leads us.